Would you believe this tiny little thing can do 100 trillion operations per second in int 8? This is the NVIDIA A1000. For display port out, mini display port, we'll take a look at this. There's something interesting here. So I was taking a look at the SFF Ada generation 4000, and while it's nice, uh, maybe overkill for some applications. Enter the A1000. Now, NVIDIA sent me this, but I wanted to play with this in the context mainly of like machine learning and whole home automation. Basically, would this with its eight gigabytes of GDDR6 be sufficient for Home Assistant and other projects like that? So that's something that I'm working on in the background. And yes, you can run LLMs with Olama on this on Linux. This is Ampere generation, just to be clear. But yeah, I can actually do 106 trillion operations per second in int 8. So this is quite a big upgrade over prior generation cards. A lot of NVIDIA's comparisons are on the T1000, but the other GPU that I was messing around with, which was popular in business class desktops, was the P2200. And I was surprised, but the A1000 absolutely trounces the P2200. It has 2,304 CUDA cores. It is 6.7 trillion operations per second for the peak single precision FP32 performance and 13.2 teraflops for the peak RT core performance. You mean to tell me this thing has ray tracing cores? Yes, it has ray tracing cores. It's about two and a half times faster in Blender and V-Ray than the T1000? Yeah, two and a half times faster, give or take. The biggest downside with this card is it doesn't have AV1 encode. It does have AV1 decode, and the NVENC, you know, generation is sort of second generation. It is quite a bit faster. If you were gonna use this for a media server or something like that, you will not want for H.264 media encode and decode on this platform. The max power consumption I measured through the slot meter thing was 51 watts, and I think it was about 50 watts if you don't count the fan. Uh, it's like 51.3 watts, something like that. After it had been running for 15 or 20 minutes, it backs off to about 48 watts, give or take, but still less than 75 watts on the order of 50 watts. That opens up a lot of possibilities. A single slot card, half height. The card is available with a half height or a full height bracket. Depending on your partner, like PNY, some of them will just bundle the half height and full height bracket and leave it up to you with a screwdriver to change. It's a little trickier to do on the SFF 4000, but on the A1000, it's pretty easy to do. It's just two Phillips screws. The mini DisplayPort connections are DisplayPort 1.4a, so you can run 4K 120 from those outputs. I am, however, gonna give you a little bit of a spoiler alert. Mini DisplayPort is not really super conducive to DisplayPort 1.4. It is very, very hard to get cables that are properly rated for DisplayPort 1.4. It's mostly a problem in the connectors. Interestingly, DisplayPort 2.1, it's very hard to get DisplayPort 2.1 signaling cleanly through full-size DisplayPort connector. There's some type of a harmonic. There's not really a good physical connector on the market that does DisplayPort 2.1. There are some brand new physical design mini DisplayPort connectors that can do a 2.1 signal, which is why we're having a little bit of a resurgence with mini DisplayPort. But I call this out because it is a specific and, and terrible kind of hell if you're in IT to try to support mini DisplayPort and mini DisplayPort to full-size DisplayPort adapters because virtually nothing on the market is any good. And when companies make a batch of bad cables and get a lot of returns, they tend not to destroy them because they don't want to take the loss. So those cables just hang around for years and years and years and years and cables that you've previously rejected as terrible, not even DisplayPort 1.2 compatible, will mysteriously show up again in the supply chain. That is not a problem for this card. This card does actually have reasonable DisplayPort 1.4 connections, as confirmed by our total phase DisplayPort connector and the eye diagrams that it produces, and then checking this thing against our fancy pants DisplayPort 1.4 4K 240 monitors, 240 with display stream compression. Yeah, it's fine, it does a good job. Now this card with its programmable shaders, second generation RT cores and third generation tensor cores mean that if you're a programmer, this is also an interesting platform to explore because your Quadro, yes, you can explore a lot of this with CUDA on GeForce, etc., etc. But wait, if you have a Synology NAS like this one, it has a PCIe slot. It doesn't support a lot of power. It's a single slot, half height, half length, low power. There's a lot of constraints in a device like this. But this has upgradable memory, 
and a reasonably powerful processor. You can put 32 gigabytes of memory in those and or more, and then you have a really pretty solid compute platform. I'm looking at something like that for my experiments. Home Assistant, large language model, etc., etc. This is basically plug and play on Linux. If you want to use something like Olama, CUDA, Docker, CUDA extensions, all of that will generally work. You're kind of limited because you've only got eight gigs of VRAM, but if you're only running one or two things at once, you can run a seven billion parameter model on the eight gig VRAM here, and you'll probably be okay, especially on the Linux platform. Well, the Synology platform is basically Linux under the hood with some modifications from Synology. So you can actually run a virtual machine on this platform. And that's what I was experimenting with for this review. And I'm happy to report that unofficially, it basically works fine. With like Synology Surveillance Station, for example, it can use CUDA to do object recognition acceleration. So you could put this in there, and then all of a sudden you're running AI on this to do car recognition, face recognition, that sort of stuff, and under a 50 watt power envelope. That means that your idle power consumption and your in use power consumption increase is negligible and you're not really overloading the power supply in your NAS in order to be able to do that, which is great for home automation stuff, which is great for putting something like, hey, when you see faces here, send me a little, an alert. You don't, you're not really relying on the camera to do face recognition because those cameras are more expensive and you're not really relying on anything else. So you can use inexpensive IP cameras plus that. Synology also has their own cameras that do this, but then what other sorts of fun AI stuff can you do? Well, you can run a Linux virtual machine and run Olama, which is your own chat GPT. And yeah, it's only a 7 billion parameter model, so it's not gonna be as good as chat GPT, but it's also not in the cloud. You can talk to your NAS and your NAS is just always there 24 seven doing interesting stuff. And eight gigs of VRAM does actually get it done. If eight gigs of VRAM is not enough for you, you're gonna be paying more for your card, but check out my other video on the SFF 4000 generation because it's got 20 gigs of VRAM and it is quite a bit faster but it is a double slot card. So while it physically will not work in the Synology, electrically, because it's only a 75 watt card, it does work in the higher end NASes that have a little bit more room, or if you get creative, the power will support it, even though physically it doesn't fit. It's gonna be sticking out the side. You're gonna have to get out the 10 snips. Do a lot of things you really don't wanna do, unless you're, you know. You can build your own, build, build your own NAS. Like we've done some videos on that. Check those out. Build your own. And then, the, then it doesn't matter. And then at that point you could use a gaming GPU. But the recommendation that I would have against a gaming GPU for any of this is 24-7 stability. These run a lot cooler. They are not pushed to the max. They are designed for 24-7 five year operation. And that's pretty much all there is to say about the A1000. I'm one of this level one. If you want to run your application or see me test something with it or something like that, let me know. Hit me up in the forum. I'm signing out and I'll see you there.